So we know a little bit about atomic structure now. We know about protons, neutrons, and electrons. We know where the nucleus is. Um, and we know the atomic theory. What we need to talk about now is the rather common but interesting case of isotopes. So we'll start with the definition. Isotopes are defined as atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons, that's the same atomic number, that's usually represented by the letter Z, but they have different numbers of neutrons represented by N. Remember that the atomic number, the number of protons in an atom, defines what element that atom is. If you change the number of protons, you change the identity of the element to something else. Just look on the periodic table. Those are arranged by atomic number. But you can change the number of neutrons in an atom and still have the same atom, but it'll have slightly different properties. Sometimes isotopes of certain elements are radioactive. Sometimes they're, well, they, they differ in mass because they have different numbers of particles in the, in the uh, nucleus. Here's a couple of uh, isotopes as an example. We have chlorine. Now chlorine actually occurs in nature, in the universe, as a mixture of two isotopes. Um, both are called chlorine because they both contain 17 protons. They have an atomic number of 17, 17 protons. If they're neutral, they have 17 electrons. Where they're different is one flavor of chlorine, one isotope of chlorine, has 18 neutrons and the other has 20. That gives them a slightly different mass. The one with 20 neutrons is a little bit heavier. We have a concept called mass number. And the mass number is nothing more than the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So the mass number of the chlorine atom with 18 neutrons would be 17 protons plus 18 neutrons, that's 35. And the mass number of the chlorine that has 20 neutrons would be 17 protons plus 20 neutrons, that's 37. Now, they're both chlorine, but it's a little hard to tell which one you're talking about if you just call them both chlorine. So the way we distinguish between them is either by adding the mass number to the end of their name or by using what's called an isotopic symbol. So the isotopic symbol is the chemical symbol that's right off the periodic table for chlorine at CL, capital C, lowercase l. And to that symbol we add a couple of numbers. On the top here we have the mass number, so either 35 or 37. Below it, to the lower left, we have the atomic number. Now you'll notice both of these symbols have the same atomic number, 17, because they're both chlorine. They both have the symbol Cl, but they have different mass numbers. One has a 35, the other has a 37. So we call these chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. That's how we distinguish between them by name. The isotopic symbol is nice because it gives us all of the information that we need about what's going on in the nucleus of these isotopes. So I can look and I can do a little subtraction in my head and I can figure out that chlorine 37 has 17 protons but it also has 20 neutrons as opposed to the 18 in chlorine 35. Now on the periodic table we have a lot of information uh, obviously the atomic number and the symbol and the name and then below it in red we have what's called the average atomic mass. But there's something interesting about this average atomic mass and we need to look at this for a second. We'll I'll take an example using chlorine still. I want you to consider the following information. One atom of chlorine 35, that's the one that has 17 protons and 18 neutrons. Uh, one atom of that has a mass of 34.968853 atomic mass units. 35 total particles in, this, in the nucleus, mass of almost 35 AMU. Now the first question is how come it's not exactly 35 AMU? We, we learned earlier that one proton is, has a mass of 1 AMU and one neutron has a mass of 1 AMU so if there are 35 protons and neutrons the mass should be 35 AMU but it's a little bit less. The secret of that is something that Einstein determined and that is that in order to hold all those particles together specifically the protons which are positively charged and don't want to be anywhere near each other positive charges repel each other like charges repel. Uh, in order to be all close to each other like that you need energy and you get that energy by converting some of the mass of those protons and neutrons into energy. Einstein showed us that energy and mass are essentially the same thing, E equals mc squared. And so by converting a little bit of our mass into 
energy, we get the energy that we need to hold the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. It's called the strong force, and that's where it comes from. So the mass of our nucleus is a little bit less than it should be because some of that mass has been converted to energy. Consider this, an atom of chlorine 37 has a mass of 36.965903 AMU, again, close to 37. Now, if I average those two together, I get 35.967378 AMU. But that is not what's listed on the periodic table as the average atomic mass. On the periodic table, the average atomic mass says 35.453 AMU. So what the heck is going on? How is it an average? Well, the key is that we're making a very important assumption. The assumption that we're making when we calculate the average atomic mass by adding those two masses together and dividing by two is we're assuming that the chlorine, the two types of chlorine are present in equal amounts in the universe. They don't exist in equal amounts. As a matter of fact, about three-fourths of all chlorine atoms in the universe are chlorine-35 with the mass of, of almost 35 AMU, and only one-fourth of the, the atoms of chlorine in the universe have a mass of about 37, about the same mass as chlorine-37. So we don't have equal amounts, which means when we calculate the average, we can't consider them both 50-50. They're not. It's more like 75-25. And so we have to take that into account when we're determining the average atomic mass. That's called a weighted average. Here's the formula. Now we see that sideways little m thing. That's sigma. That means sum. And so what we're going to do to do this weighted average is we're going to add up the products of the mass of each isotope times its percent abundance. That takes into account how much of each atom of chlorine is chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. So we take the first one, the mass of chlorine-35, you remember, was 34.968853. We multiply it by its percent abundance. It's 75.78%. Well, we didn't want to do that in decimal, okay, so 0.7578 we get 26.499396. We do the same thing with chlorine-37. We take the mass of chlorine-37, which is 36.965903. We multiply it by its percentage, 24.22%, or 0.2422, and we get 8.9531417. We add those together. That's what the sigma means. We add them together, and we get 35.45251. Go back and look at your periodic table. The average mass of chlorine, according to the periodic table, is 35.453, which is exactly what we got, only we got it a little bit more accurately. That's how those masses on the periodic table are calculated. They are calculated taking into account all of the naturally occurring isotopes of each element and how abundant those elements are. All right? You try it. Three magnesium isotopes. Magnesium comes in three varieties naturally. Magnesium 24, 25, and 26. Here are your masses. Here are your percent abundances. Stop the video, do the calculation, and see if you can calculate the average atomic mass of magnesium. All set? I got 24.30505. And if I look on the periodic table, 24.3051. Did you get that? If not, we'll have some more practice. But if you did, you're right on track. We'll pick up the next time.